All right, guys, welcome back to another video. I'm pretty sure you can tell by the thumbnail uh, that I went to the Chevy dealer yesterday and checked out some beautiful C8 Corvettes. Now, the C8 Corvette is a car that's always been in uh, the line of view for wanting to own. And my dilemma is that I thought I couldn't fit in one, actually. Um, but I did some scouring around the Internet uh, and I talked to a few people uh, that were... I guess bigger than me, you know. Uh, these guys are. I think the car tops out at about six six, uh, six feet six, six inches tall, depending on your her slender or how how you know plump you are. I guess I'll say uh, that is probably gonna be the biggest person that can fit in this car. About six feet tall, six feet six foot tall. So um, with me being six four, about two twenty five to two thirty, you know. You know I peek out at about 2.30 sometimes when I'm not exercising properly. Uh, but um, at my weight and size and frame, the car's actually got a little bit more room than my Camaro. So the C8 Corvette obviously shot to the top of my list. Uh, I think the C8 Corvette is probably one of the, that's gotta be the most the most bang for buck in, a, in like a borderline supercar that a person could actually afford. And if you think about if you think about pricing, the C8 Corvette when it first launched, it started out at fifty nine thousand dollars, and I think Chevy said, "Whoa, um, we're going to increase this price immediately." Look at the demand for this vehicle. So, over the next three years of production, we're heading into the twenty twenty four models. Those uh, pre orders for those start, I believe, in September or possibly at the end of June. Um, but um, you know, this this car is like an affordable supercar it's what it is now i know the z06 is like the official people will really consider that a supercar because it's got the 5.5 liter flat plane create uh, flight plane crank v8 uh, and it's producing some sick numbers it's beating tons of ferraris and lamborghinis left and right but i'm not tracking i'm not i'm not going on road courses I'm, and most i might do is take it to the track for uh you know a qu quick quarter mile or something like that but that's not the intent for getting this vehicle um when i bought the camaro the idea, you know, I have, a, I just have, I just have to have and want a two-door sports car for those days that I just want to get out and just ride, and that is the intent of uh, the C8 Corvette. But I think the C8 Corvette might be a little bit more fun because it's it's a mid-engine car, uh, and um, you know, it's it's way more sleek and more stylish than any Camaro could actually ever be. And it's when it's recognized on the road, people actually still awe over this car even though this is the third generation we're in with it. So nonetheless, current date C8s cost uh, 65,000 to start opposed to the 60,000 basically. It was 59,999 or something like that back in the day. And um, you know, 65,000 to start for this car. You could just order one for 65,000 and play destination charge and you know, you're at about 66, 67,000 bucks and you pretty much have a sports car that's not very common on the road. Now, if you go into any Corvette forum, you're gonna sit, you're gonna see people saying, oh, they're everywhere. Well, there's this thing about, have you ever felt like this? Every time you buy a car, or the times that you purchased a car, you start to see your car on the road more? That's probably what happens, you know, because there's not a lot of Corvettes out there at all um, because they're spread so thin. There may be 100,000 Corvettes on the road, but how many people are in the world? You know, and it's an expensive car, so not a lot of people are willing to buy it. It's also a two-door car. Uh, two-seater, I should say. And a lot of people have room for that. A lot of people have children and they can't afford two vehicles. Uh, you know, it's, it, there's way too many scenarios. Uh, but I will say that there's not as many of those on the road. Reason being is because there's there's only the third generation, like I said, and we're only heading into the fourth generation. But that car is so sleek on the road. It is incredible. So I was at a lock. I decided to hit up the Chevy dealer and it just so happens they had two of the same kind and color right there on the lot. And I started filming this and I just thought, wow, I got to share this with them because um, I didn't actually, I looked on the website and they had like six on the website, uh, but the cars sell so well that dealers put a big addendum on them, 20 grand. And they're, they're wanting you to pay that 20 grand. Some dealers are, are, are marking the cars up 25, 30 grand. I've seen a completely base uh, C8 uh, in, in San Antonio. I saw it was just black. So the color black the, some colors you have to pay for, like red mist metallic, the orange, the blue. You know, some of the colors you have to pay for. They're five to five hundred to a thousand dollars, 
And I've seen some that are just plain white or plain black or any of the colors that you don't have to pay for with no options and they still want $95,000. I'm thinking, wow, these people are crazy. But, uh, and they're not willing to budge. Their excuse is, uh, and their, their reasoning is because of the demand for the car. No, th that's just price gouging. Folks, you can find a dealer that will pay, uh, that will uh, sell you the car at MSRP. I mean, the dealers, uh, I wish Chevy would do something about this, like cut the dealer's allocations or some, do something to those dealers who are straight up just price gouging and trying to rob customers. Uh, because, but the, but the unfortunate part is there are customers that are buying with the addendum. That's why the dealers keep doing it. So uh, they know that if they press hard enough, people will just say cave and say, yes, I really want it. But it is not that serious for me. I do not plan on paying over for any vehicle that I buy. And I haven't done it and I don't plan on doing it. I just will. I'll just pass. I don't care how bad I want it or I'll just keep searching because someone will sell me the car, uh, whatever car I choose in the end at the actual retail price, which is MSRP or less. And most of the time I can get it for a little bit less because of my military and other things like that. But the C8 Corvette, uh, it, it's a just a stellar. This car is it, it may not be the fastest car on the road, but I can tell you. No one really cares what you look like going. I don't care what a car looks like going really fast. I like to sit and appreciate the car standing still and look at all the body lines and the curves of it. So, you know, moving from the Camaro to the Corvette is kind of the obvious jump, right? It's it's the obvious thing to do. So, you know, even though I looked at the um, Shelby uh, last week, that Shelby. Oh, my God. That Shelby. Um, oh. That, that truck is beautiful. And obviously, it's a two-seater. It's a two-door truck. It is fast. It's much faster than than the, the C8 Corvette. That particular one would, would ever be. That, that C8 Corvette is 490 and 460 if you opt to not get the performance exhaust. Because a lot of people think that you have you get the 495 and the and the 465 or whatever it is, the upgraded five horsepower and torque, or whatever, if you if you get the Z51 package. Those people are not correct. You can just get the exhaust. And it doesn't. So the reason I wouldn't get the exhaust is because that's only five horsepower for for 1500 bucks, and I could get more horsepower out of out out of a different setup for about the same money, and it would sound better and probably look better as well. So nonetheless, I've been doing a lot of research on all the cars that I've been looking at lately to replace the the, the Camaro and the C8. Once I found out that it was comfortable and had more leg room and more room than the Camaro, I was in. So uh, I've, been, I've been hitting a couple of lots along with other, I, and, I mean, you might see other videos come up after this one, who knows, where I'm out shopping for a vehicle and I'm looking at some, some performance vehicles. So um, I consider it the dark horse, but no one has a dark horse uh, Ford Mustang. And I'm not, I'm a straight GM person. I just, you know, I went from being all Mopar to, well, not all, I was always kind of GM. I've always been GM to the core. Then I switched to Mopar for a little bit. But Mopar is saturated, folks. It is so saturated. You see all these idiots out here doing donuts. It's like they're, they're not really, I'm not going to be judgmental. I just think a lot of the Mopar drivers are all the same. They put big wheels on them. Uh, they do burnouts and hold up traffic. That's being very stereotypical. But it, what do you see? Google it. Look for yourself. You don't see any hardcore. You see very few hardcore Mopar fans actually at the track. You know, like Demonology, he's always at the track with his. He doesn't street race and do all that nonsense, to my understanding. And it's just a bunch of people out there to just saturate the Mopar community. It's just bad. And that's not the reason I stopped using Mopar. I just decided to go back to where I really love, which is GM products. Because I'm not really, I realized after owning all those Mopars, the speed really didn't matter. It was about the, the, the car and the experience. And with Mopar, it's just not there anymore, folks. It, it's so saturated and toxic, it's incredible. You switch over to the Chevy side. It's somewhat like that, but nowhere near as bad as the um, as, as the Mopar side at all. But the Chevy Corvette, uh, the communities are a little bit more mature. There, uh, some people say that old old people drive Corvettes. <laughs> um, I am an older gentleman, so I guess it's inevitable that I, I, I buy a Corvette. Uh, but I just kind of outgrown the the Camaro, and it's nice. But there's so many Camaros on the road, it's almost boring. So. I want something, that is why I shot for the Shelby, because there's not a lot of Shelbys on the road. One, it's over $100,000, and so that eliminates the majority of the population, um, because I wouldn't I wouldn't advise that you finance something at, at that magnitude. Uh, it's a depreciating asset, 
Um, now, over time, certain vehicles will hold value. Like the, the C8 Corvette has held its value great in the last three years. I mean, you'll see videos saying that it's going down, all sorts of stuff. Yeah, I get it, but it's still, I could buy this C8 and turn around and flip it and make 20 grand, just like that, with ease. Some will do it because, because there's not a lot of them on the road and some people uh, just want it so they can try to do that. But nonetheless, that wouldn't be the reason for, I've never bought a vehicle just to, just because it was a hot vehicle to turn around and resell it and make money, no. Also, um, I think the, the C8 Corvette has the, it just has a an appeal to it. Anytime I've seen someone driving a C8, I was I, I was in awe like, man, I'd love to get one of those. I can actually afford one. Um, but the the Shelby pricing eliminates a lot of the world and so does so does the C8. The C8 starts at 65, but $65,000 plus taxes and fees comes to almost 70 for a lot of people or 70 uh or could be more by the time you get done with everything. So uh, a lot of people don't want to do that, and 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 they don't want to finance that kind of money, uh, you know, for a vehicle that is technically a depreciating asset. Uh, but um, I feel like the C8 has it, it will always have something. Even the older generation, the C7, the C6, the C5. Oh, the C5 is one of the hottest man. And I can get a C5 right now, still in great condition for under thirty grand. I mean, I, I can get one. In, I can get a one older probably. I've looked around. With like twenty thousand miles, and they're they're less than thirty grand in mint condition, uh, and that's just incredible. Now, one dream car I would love to have is ZR1. I've always wanted a ZR1, but they're over a hundred grand, and some people are charging two hundred thousand dollars for that car now. Uh, and and the, the the older generations, they're charging two hundred grand for it because they know that there is none on the road. Really, it was expensive back then. That is an official supercar, man. Uh, the Corvette line has just always been phenomenal to me. And you know the C8 has the the new C8s, the, the 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 Corvettes, the Stingray. It's just such a beautiful. And they had these cars in yellow, and I thought, wow, that is never a color that I would choose. But folks, that yellow isn't a real bright yellow. Uh, it is a real deep yellow. It, it's so beautiful. And I think um, if you were to consider a C8, I'd actually drive that that yellow color, man. But nonetheless. Car shopping continues. Uh, so, did I did I get? Let's let's go outside. No, I'm just <laughs> just jokes, jokes. I didn't buy one of those C8s. If I be if I if I'm if I'm being honest, if I buy a C8 or whatever car I get, I tend to not want to buy the ones that are directly on the lot. So, if you look at my history, if you could, you'd see that mo nearly 99% of the vehicles I purchased were either ordered or coming in, I caught them before they actually hit the lot and paid for it. Or I bought it off the showroom floor with, I made sure it had no test drives and things like that. It, it might sound sound funny, but you know, I'm a stickler when it comes to something like that. I don't want something that the other person has jumped in and just took it all about. And so when I buy a vehicle, uh, I deal with the same salespeople. I have a great salesperson. Maybe I'll reveal that person one day, but I don't want you guys to flood that person. I mean, I want them to have business, but, um, yeah, I'll share one day. An uh, awesome person. Just just one of the best salespersons ever. Um, definitely will take care of you. Uh, but, you know, the, the C8 Corvette, if I decided to get one, it would be one that I would customize and order to my liking. Color, spec, everything. Because a lot of times when you see the one in the video here, it's loaded up with things I just wouldn't get. Uh, like the coloring. Some There's two of them. One of them had yellow brake calibers, which makes sense, you know, but that's a that's a... That's a color that you're paying for on your brake calibers just to match the car. And I've never, I actually like black brake calibers or gray or I, I like a deep, I like to blend with the wheel. Uh, but um, some of the things the dealers add on like black lug nuts charging like 500 bucks or stuff like that. I just, I wouldn't do that. That's why I know some of those vehicles are, are, are ordered by the dealer because they're going to get every penny out of you that they can. And not just on the Corvette, but they do this for a lot of different things. So I would tell a person if you're in the market for a, a Corvette, try to get one that's that's at MSRP or less. Uh, I wouldn't, I've heard people say that uh, you should buy a used one. The used ones cost more than new ones. I was down the street at a Ford dealer one time, not not from my house, but I was at, there's a Chevy dealer where I go to, and down the street there's a Ford dealer. And that dealer had a 2022 C8 Corvette with 3,000 miles on it for $100,000. And it had no options. 
It was a 1LT convertible, no options whatsoever. And they wanted $100,000 and it was used. It was a 2022 with 3,000 miles. So the, you can tell me about the market and all this stuff if you want to, but my advice is to always buy your car new. Uh, that way you reap the rewards of everything that can go wrong with it. And you know exactly what this spot came with happened here. That's just how I do it. I, 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 don't, I haven't bought a used car in quite some time. Uh, the last used car I bought was the Beast. I don't know if you remember my SRT 300. I should have never gotten rid of that car, but I started to have some electric, electrical issues. And then I started to have two things with electrical issues and something with all the sensors. Something was going wrong with it. And so I was able to sell it and make a profit. That's the only reason I sold it. Uh, but I, I really didn't want to sell it and I really should have kept it and just redone it. I should have just invested the money into it, put the money into it because that was a car that you just cannot find on the road. And mine had 80,000 miles on it. So I was stupid for selling that car and I regret it every day, but nothing I could do about it. I tried to get it back and I can't. So, but nonetheless, uh, used Corvettes definitely cost more than new ones. But the issue is that you have to wait. If you buy a new one, you're going to have to wait for it to get built. Uh, uh, or you're going to have to try to fight off an addendum. And then you also might find one that it doesn't have options that you actually want. So I've been speaking to a lot of Corvette owners and a lot of them, um, you know, they're very happy with their cars and they, they just, they say the excitement doesn't wear off. I was watching a guy who's had his for three years and he's got 82,000 miles on it. He's probably the highest mileage Corvette that I've ever seen. It's a 2020 and he's only gone through like two sets of tires in those three years. And I think he had like the transmission rebuild, a few things. It's online somewhere. I, I'd have to try to find it. But he is the only one that has 83,000, I think, or something like that on this Corvette. I haven't seen any high mileage Corvettes. Now, I've spoken to people online where they have like 25,000, 30,000 because it's their daily driver. Uh, but and you can daily drive the C8. It's a, depending on which some people will tell you the seat that you get. Now, if I were to get this car, I wouldn't get the real sporty seats because uh, they say if you're a big person, don't get the sporty seats. But I'm not I'm a tall guy, but I'm not you know, really plumped or whatever. I'm a stature, a muscular stature, basically a thin frame. And I can fit into all the seats, but I want comfort. So if I do decide to get a Corvette, I would get the most comfortable seat of them all, which is actually the GT1 seat. Uh, and that is the seat that is, uh, um, Chevy tells you, if you're gonna do a lot of long distance driving, you wanna get this seat. You don't need the sportier seats. Now actually, the Corvettes that I got in, and those Corvettes that, that are in this video, those yellow ones, they have the GT2 seats, which are right under the, the competition seat. And the competition seat, obviously, is a competition seat. It's for racing. You know, you're going to be road coursing the car a lot and tracking it. So um, I think a lot of people who buy the C8, though, it's their money. But I think a lot of people waste money. They're getting things like the Z51 package, and they're not even road coursing the car. Some people are saying, oh, I got it for the, the more cooling system and all these different things. If you're not tracking the car, folks, you could save so much money with a C8. You actually could get a C8 with the just a few options and you have the same car as the next guy. It, it literally looks the same. Now the Z06, uh, they actually had a Z06 at that lot too, but unfortunately somebody, they had it in the showroom floor and then I think one of the salespeople bought it. I was like, wow, you know, yeah, they had that car marked up $100,000. It was $270,000. The, the Z06, the way they had it spec, was already $180,000, I think it was. And it was it was selling, they had it marked up $100,000. Uh, $280,000 for the Z06. Now, the Z06 base price is about $105,000. But my thoughts on that is I would actually like the E-Ray. Um, the E-Ray is really nice because it actually has a faster quarter mile than the Z06. But when you start to go long distance, like if, it were, if you were to go a mile race, the E-Ray will get walked down and, and passed because of the, the front electric portion of it turns off after a while and you just have the basic 495 and then the thing with the z the, with the regular stingrays that i was looking at um yesterday those have 490 495 that's a lot of power for a street car so the launch control on on the c8 pretty much can get any car off the line but it's that distance where if you can't catch the c8 then you lose but if most cars can they have better top end so a lot of guys have already pro charged twin turbo their c8s I'd like to do something like that if I was going to use it, but I've found that a lot of people don't really use it and they're just doing it just to go to cars and coffee or just to get the approval of, <laughs> it's, it's like that sometimes, man. Or you just, some people just, 
like to modify their cars and they're, they're really never going to use it. They're never going to use it. But I will be sharing more content on my car shopping ventures. So thank you for checking out this 2023 CA Corvette venture here. Those cars were beautiful, man. They just happened to be the same color. And I talked to the guy, I was like, whoa. One of the salesperson was shooting a video for a customer at the time. And uh, I was like, I'm gonna I'm a shoot a, he was like, man, you can do whatever you want. They, they kind of know me at the lot. So they was like, you do whatever you want to do, dude. So I was like, okay, cool. Um, but the, the cars are just, the C8 is, the C8 is at the top of my list. And then and then probably, I don't want to share yet. The Shelby's nice. Uh, and remember the budget for this car shopping experience is $125,000. I will not go over that because you get into, how much did my house cost? You know, you start thinking about stuff, about stuff like that. What's the value of my house? Um, so the value of my house, I, I wouldn't want to go more than like a percentage of the value of my house with a car and parking outside because <clears throat> A house is an appreciating asset. Your 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 my house is worth a lot of money, and I'm not gonna park a car outside that's um, $125,000, and my house is worth six fifty. I I don't think that makes sense, uh, but you do you. Uh, I want to stay under a hundred thousand, and I probably will stay under a hundred thousand because when you're paying cash for something. You know, some people tell you not to pay cash, but the reason I would want to pay cash for a Corvette or Shelby or the AMG, I'll, I'll show you. I'll, okay, I'm, I got some cars lined up, but the reason I'd want to pay cash for certain cars is because I know there's not a lot of them on the road compared to other cars, and they will hold a value, but I'm not buying it to sell it. You see, so once you pay cash for a car, that's it. So I, I have some things that I would love to do. The Shelby is already put together. So the only thing I would do with the Shelby, in that Shelby video, I didn't show you the exhaust. Uh, it was quiet, but it has valves. Obviously it has valves and he didn't open the valves. It wasn't like super quiet because the dump was on the right. And so it wasn't super quiet, but he didn't open the valves. And, and I was like, forget it, let's just go for a ride. But in the car, the, the exhaust sounds incredible. But for the Shelby, it's already lowered. It's already got 22 inch Voss and wheels on it. it. It was loaded up. There's nothing that needs to be done to that vehicle. The sound system was decent. Uh, it was it was loud now, but it was it didn't have a lot of bass. But you you know you could adjust things. But um, the Shelby uh, truck, uh, it was the most comfortable of all the vehicles that I'm probably going to talk about. I guess over the next you know time of looking for this vehicle until I actually pick one. Um, but I can tell you this: whatever vehicle I pick. It will be ordered. I will I will do my best not to buy one that is on the lot. And that's another reason with that Shelby. It had about 30 miles on it. Again, you're going to say, well, 30 miles, Jay? Yes, it was a 2022, and it's got 30 miles on it. It had 29, but when I drove it, it had about, after that, it had about 35 miles on it. But I just had this thing about, you know, a bunch of people test driving a car, and then I buy it. It's, hey, my money, You some of you guys probably feel like that, too. But, um, you know, paying cash for these cars is it's a privilege it's a it's a blessing to be able to dump that kind of money into a car uh and some people are gonna say well you can put that on the market stock market got money on the stock market it's, it's not an issue there's i've got investments so this is a something where you know to replace this camaro is the camaro is cool and everything the camaro i think i paid 46 for my camaro got a good deal on that on that convertible but um i i just really I think that when you're buying a, a performance car like this, paying cash for it is probably gonna be the best way because you won't get a good interest rate. Now, again, on the Shelby, because it was a 22, they were offering zero interest rate. And I was like, yeah, I probably would finance this, but that car is $110,000 out the door. That truck, I should say, is $110,000 out the door. So I would still have to put down about 85 to get it to a somewhat of a low payment, which means I might as well just pay the thing off, you see? so. If it was zero interest rate on a fifty thousand dollar or a seventy five thousand dollar vehicle, boom! I just wouldn't pay anything. I, I just no money down. Just this is finance it. Zero interest rate. How could you lose? So um, you have a pretty hefty payment, but if you can afford it, then good. So the C eight, that one that I was those two before I get out of here, those two that I was looking at, they were both had a twenty thousand dollar addendum on them. They were really only like seventy seven or so, uh, and they were the coupes, not the convertibles. And which is what I would prefer. I don't want the convertible because you cannot see the engine. To me, that just 
defeats the purpose of having the C8 Corvette. I know a lot of people say, oh, it's easy access. You gotta get out the car, take the top off, because both cars can go topless. The convertible version is just push button. And then the coupe, you just manually take the top off and put it in the trunk, it stores away. It's beautiful. I think that's so much better. But the convertible, you cannot see the engine. And I was just like, that just bums me out. That's the purpose of having that vehicle is to see that beautiful C8 engine in the back. Just beautiful. So it would have to be a coupe for me because I want to leave that glass open and just, oh, there's so many, there's just so much more about the, the Corvette that I just really love. But this isn't, these aren't the only cars that I've been looking at. Like again, I said, I was looking for Dark Horse and I might hit, the, hit the, another four dealer today to see if they have a, a Dark Horse, at least in the showroom or something, because you can't order them. One thing I want to get out, before I get out of here, I want to talk about is I actually spotted the 2023 Chrysler 300 SRT8. It was sold when I went to the dealer yesterday, but I might go back out there and see if it's still there and and because I want you to see that car in person. Oh, it was the last call, 300 SRT8. Oh, it was beautiful. It's your man, Jay. Hope you guys enjoyed. C8 Corvette. What do you think about those cars? Is that one I should get to replace the Camaro? Inevitable, right? I'll see you in the next video. Take care.